Hey Siri, stop. Hey guys, uh, welcome to the class. Uh, we're gonna get this meeting started. Uh, I wanted to see how many people were comfortable having their video on. So I'm gonna turn all the videos on and see how many of you are projecting and wanna project. Um, if you feel shy or you don't want your, your camera on, uh, we, we can turn them off. Uh, this is, class is mainly gonna take place showing you my desktop. And uh, I'm not all that comfortable being on the camera myself. We're all kind of new to Zoom, but uh, I wanted to talk about it a little bit. I'll, I'll go into Zoom in a second, but uh, I'm gonna actually turn off video and just get going with um, uh, the slides. So welcome to Create a Presentation. This is your first class here at Full Sail, and I'm happy that you're all here. Uh, we really are excited uh, and we really want to make online learning something that's really dynamic and vital for you guys. So uh, we're doing our best. These live lectures are not like the, the center of everything. They're, they're like a keynote for each week. You guys are going to be studying on your own and I try to host these live sessions on the first day of the week to kind of go through all the material and let you make a plan. Because with online learning, you get to kind of set your own schedule. So it's important to kind of know what's what's being asked for the week so you can make your own sort of schedule for it. So uh, today, what I want to do is uh, go through a couple of things. Just get oriented, get you guys settled, talk to you about the system a little bit, talk about the reading. The reading, there are two books for this class, and they're very important. And, uh, you know, um, we're using a, a third-party source for the books, so I wanna talk about that a little bit. And I wanna talk about the two assignments for the week so you guys can know what we're looking for. Uh, I'll show you examples, I'm, I'm very, very uh, open. I don't want this to be a mystery. This is not a gotcha kind of class. We ask for your opinions and your ideas. And uh, we know that this is a, a level one class. We're gonna ask you to be creative. We're gonna ask you to make multimedia. We're gonna ask you to record audio and, and work with video and so forth, but we're not gonna hold you responsible for any technical prowess. We know that we haven't taught you how to do all this stuff yet. So uh, the, this class is really about your ideas and being able to express your ideas. And that's what we're looking for. That's what we're grading for. Uh, but we know that in a modern age, you don't just do that by uh, you know writing in word alone. You have to express yourself. So we want you to use all the tools that you're probably already using in, um, you know, Instagram and Twitter and TikTok, whatever, uh, you're making videos. So I, I'm, I'm not sure that's a huge leap here. So I want to go through all this stuff. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about this technology. So uh, I'm going to turn the video panel back on and just see if we can get a handle on uh, how many people have their cameras on. Uh, it's about a, a half of you. That's pretty good. Um, most of you don't have a preview shot. So even if you don't wanna be on camera, uh, I, I suggest because you're gonna be using Zoom a lot, you're gonna be using Zoom in later classes and so forth, that just like on FSO, you know, if I turn off my video, you're gonna see a, 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 a still that's put in place. And it's pretty much the same still that I have as my avatar on FSO. So that's what I recommend. You can go to the profile uh, section of Zoom, the software that we're using, that uh, you know just got you got set up with, and you can add a still there. And so even if you're not on camera, people are seeing your face. If you're talking, you know we want this to be interactive. I want to be able to be use use people's microphones. So um, with only half the people showing the video, I'm going to turn off the video. I think it's going to be distracting and and, and so forth. You can just watch the slides and so forth. But when I call on people, uh, I'm gonna turn on and off mics and I want people to be able to uh, you know, um, comment. So uh, when that happens, it'd be nice to show a face along with your name. It's not absolutely necessary. This is the first day, so I'm not asking everybody to go and do that now. But later on after you're done, you can look, at the, look into the profile and realize that you can just add an image here. And therefore, instead of being on camera, you can represent yourself uh, with a still image, and that's a good way of, of being present without, you know, uh, being on the show. 
So I'm going to, with that, I'm going to turn off the video panels right now and we'll just go on forward without it. Now there's also a chat box. So anybody who doesn't feel like uh, talking can answer questions in the chat box. If your microphone isn't working, which is going to happen a lot, we, a lot of people, you know, using gear that who knows where it came from. Maybe it was handed down from mom or something and, and you know, it's janky and doesn't work. Uh, if your microphone is uh, not working, then you can answer any questions you want in the chat box. And for right now, uh, I'd like everybody to go to the chat box. Um, we have people from all over the country um, represented here. So I want everybody to go down there and just type where you're at right now so we can get a good sense of, uh, you know, what parts of the country are being represented by the class today. We have uh, uh, we've got 23 people here. That's a pretty good group. Uh, Orlando, New York, Pensacola, Paul in New York, Daytona, Hammond, Indiana, New York, a lot of New York and Florida, uh, Pueblo, Colorado, Catana, Puerto Rico, that's pretty cool, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Houston, Conneet Lake, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico again. All right, so we got the East Coast represented, so I, uh, usually I have a lot of West Coast folks. Um, one thing I do mention is, uh, Got to keep a notion of the, the uh, time zone here. When I use times, I use uh, Florida time, which is Eastern Standard Time. And it may not be the same time as yours. And uh, when that matters, this is like when I talk about a deadline. Most deadlines for the class are Sunday nights at midnight. That's not, you know, right before Saturday. It's at the end of the day, Sunday at midnight. Um, and uh, that's Eastern time. So if your deadline is, uh, if you're in the West Coast, that means your deadline is 9 p.m. on Sunday because it's, when it's midnight in Florida, it's 9 p.m. in California. So you guys kind of have to compute that in your head. The system itself allows you to put in your, your, your base uh, location and therefore it translates all the dates to you. But when uh, you know, we talk about it or say things, you guys kind of have to, you know, have a notion of that. Uh, I didn't mean to get onto a rant about time zone, but it's something that confuses people. So this software is fairly new, but um, uh, what's happened with the uh, current, you know, crisis that we're running in is that everyone who's now find themselves quarantined at home has started using this on a personal basis. So Zoom has gotten very popular in the last two or three weeks. I know I use it to uh, talk to my uh, family, my sisters, and so forth, relatives. And many of you may have used it for those purposes. So uh, we'll try to be as social as possible. Um, these classes are meant to be informational. So these are kind of going to be lecture. They'll, they'll be as interactive as we can make them. But I'm really trying to give you good information to get set up for the week. But given that, in addition to these lectures, which is the thing that you know you have to register for and sign up for you'll see me posting uh video office hours and that's just an open session that uh, nobody has to attend and if you attend you could be on camera or not it's all up to you but it's like uh i'm happy to talk to people any which way and in that regard um uh, that's the reason i'm publishing my my personal phone number uh i want you to put it in your contacts so you have it in your phone and you can text me whenever you want. Uh, you can get a hold of me on, on uh, FSO anytime you like. But what happens is when you ask a question on FSO and it gets posted, you know, I have to come back across it. And it's not like I'm constantly looking at that single page. So it may be some time now, you know, I'm, I'm active through the day. It's quite often that uh, I'm going to see your message within a half hour or an hour. But you can't guarantee it. So if you're, really wanting an answer to your question, I invite you to text me to my, my phone because I always have my phone with me. It's never a problem for me to answer any questions. So you don't feel like you're interrupting me or anything. But uh, I want to be myself available to you and I want to be able to, uh, you know, let you get a hold of me anytime you like. But then in addition, like I say, I'm going to post um, um, office hours on, on Zoom. So you can have a, we can just chat or we can, uh, we can text or we can, uh, we can talk video face-to-face, -face, video calls. It's becoming much more common. And uh, anyway, my job is just to be available to you. I'm, uh, 
not a young guy. I'm an old fart. I've been around a long time, but I've been using computers forever, so I know a lot about them. Uh, I'm not hip. You know, if you listen, hear me play music or hear me talk about uh, movies or video games, you know, I'm sort of going to uh, admit the last 20 years and <laughs> talk, talk about the 19th, the 20th century. Uh, but um, uh, I am interested in all things, and uh, I'm very actively interested in what you guys are doing, and I'm very jazzed by the creativity that you guys bring to the fore. And uh, I was previously a, a video uh, instructor. I've had a, a sort of long and varied career in video. I uh, was a producer, and then I was a teacher, and, and, and then I, I was very early involved in online education before it was a very big deal and when it was really expensive. And so all the clients I had were like doctors and nurses and stuff and people who could afford huge, huge prices. Um, but uh, uh, I've been teaching at Full Sail for the last uh, 12 or 13 years. I came here to teach digital video. I taught that for about 10 or 12 years. And I've been teaching this class uh, for, the, for the last three or four years. Uh, it's really interesting. It's basically a form of storytelling. So, you know, we call this class Creative Presentation. Uh, I'll get into it in a minute, but it, don't really think of this as a PowerPoint class. We want you to make presentations, but what we really want is to get for you to communicate in a way that's effective. So we're really talking about storytelling strategies, uh, vocal uh, tips to be able to be connected with people, about really being persuasive and authentic in the way that you talk to others. And uh, I think you'll find it useful. I know that, uh, you know, this is the class that everybody coming to Full Sail takes. And you may wonder why, you know, if you're here to study mobile programming or audio production, why you have to take this class. Well, this is just something that everyone is going to have to deal with in their professional life, being able to get along with others and be able to communicate your ideas, being able to express them in, in uh, brief, concise ways. And so we're teaching these skills to everyone early on to get to uh, in, initiated in the habit. Uh, nothing we teach you this month is something that you're going to become an expert on this month. You're going to become uh, initiated in trying these ways and you're going to have 30 months of continuing to use these skills to get better and better and better. And uh, that's the way we look at it. So hopefully uh, all of you will just get initiated on the right path. So uh, that's who I am. Uh, right now is my chance to find out who you guys are. So uh, I've got a list of everybody who's logged in and I'm going to run through. And again, I'm not going to embarrass people by turning the video back on. So uh, it'll just be your voice, but I'm going to call everybody and I'm going to give you 15 seconds to answer four questions. Now, uh, these, this is not a gotcha. I'm going to show you the four questions right now. I want you to tell me, what is your name? Where are you from? What are you here to study? Because we're all here in different degree programs. This, these uh, first four classes that you take combine people from all different degree programs. So you're not necessarily in the same room with people studying the same thing you are. And then finally, I want you to give me two words that describe your professional vision. Just sort of a, a little mental Rorschach there. So um, the first person I'm going to ask is Amber James. Are you there? Uh, hi. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. All right. My name is, you know, Amber James. I'm from Owensboro, Kentucky. I'm studying computer animation. And I don't really understand what to say about my professional vision. Um, if you had to describe yourself in two words, what would it be? Fun cartoons. Funny cartoons. All right. Good start there. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. Uh, all right. I have someone who's got their phone number as their name, uh, one three four seven three four four one one three two. I hope you're a human being. I'm unmuting you. Are you there? Are you a robot? Did you leave Westworld? Uh, your phone may not work, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that one go. Brandon Brancom. Brancom. Brancom, sorry. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you sound good. Yeah, you sound good. 
All right, so my name is Brandon. Uh, I'm from Pueblo, Colorado. I'm studying game design. And uh, the two words, I guess, would be innovating and groundbreaking. There you go. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Brandon Manis. Uh, my name is Brandon Manis. Uh, I'm from Hammond, Indiana. I'm studying music production. And two words that would describe my professional vision would be um, great and successful. All right. Like, uh, don't even know to school, need to go to school. You're already successful. Excellent. Uh, Sharice Strong. Sharice, are you there? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you now. All right. So, my name is Sharice Strong. I'm from New York. Um, I already forgot the question. This is so bad. It's on the screen. Uh, I'm studying uh, game design. And two words to describe my professional vision. Uh, I suck at describing myself. We'll accept those as your answer. Uh, sure, I'll take that. And Cherie Uh Christian Rondon. Um, hi, uh, I'm Christian. Um, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm a stream music production. Excellent. Yeah, uh, and two words that I described by my uh, about my professional vision. Uh, I don't kind. I don't understand that. All right. We, uh, we'll uh, try to make a better chance, uh, uh, try to explain it better next time. Uh, Christian Mahasnit, and I'm sure I got that wrong. It's okay, it's Mahasna, and it's Christine Mahasna. I'm from Pensacola, Florida, and I'm going into the information technology bachelor's program. And two words to describe is determined and even more determined. All right, double determined. So uh, uh, as a reference, two words that I would describe myself as wacky and intellectual. Not necessarily good things, but that's who I am. Uh, Derek Stewart. Stewart. So my name is uh, Derek Stewart. I'm originally from uh, Louisiana, Monroe, but I'm in uh, Houston, Texas now. I'm studying audio production and uh, two professional words would be live and determined. There you go. That's interesting. Thank you. Uh, Jacob Heiser. Uh, my name is Jacob Heiser. I'm from Michigan. I'm studying game design and my professional vision would be Fun and entertaining. Fun and entertaining. There you go. Jonathan Smith. Hi. Uh, my name is Jonathan William Smith. I'm from Florence, Alabama. I am studying uh, animation. And two words that describe me are uh, creative and goofy. Those are good choices. Thanks. Uh, Jonathan Wallastone. Hey everybody, I'm Jonathan Wilson from Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, I'm studying music business, bachelor's. And um, two words that describe my professional vision would be optimistic and uh, effective. Those are good, thank you. Jovan Willis. Can you hear me? Are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? I hear you. Yes, I'm Jovan Willis. I'm from Ocala, Florida. I'm studying audio production and two words, spiritual analyst. Spiritual analyst, interesting. Now I want to know you more. Um, Joshua Cabro Rohan. Hello, uh, my name is Joshua Cabro Rohan. Uh, I'm from New York. 
Uh, what I'm majoring in right now is actually audio production, but I'm thinking about digital cinematography because I do love entertainment as well as movies and anime, and I like to, and I'm very good on camera. Um, my tr my professional vision is adaptive and persistent. Adaptive and persistent. Excellent. Um, Lyric Jenkins. Hi, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, so my name is Sarah Jenkins. I am originally from Arthur, Texas, but I'm living in North Carolina. Um, my, what I'm studying is computer animation and what I, and what I can describe to myself, um, playful and creative. That's good. Uh, Malcolm Frazier. Hello, you can hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah, how are you doing? My name is Malcolm Frazier. I'm from West Palm Beach, Florida. I'm studying entertainment business. And two words to describe me would be funny and dedication. Great words. Thanks. Uh, Megan Thornton. Hi, uh, my name is Megan Thornton. I am from Conneaut Lake, Pennsylvania, and I'm studying computer animation. And two words to describe myself would be a dreamer and meticulous. Mm, nice combination. Uh, Malcolm Frazier? Yes. Hello? Yes. I just introduced myself. Okay, sorry, my fault. Um, Nicola Rocco? Uh, hi, I'm Nicola Rocho. I am from Catano, Puerto Rico. I'm studying music business, and two words that would describe myself would be creative and musical. Those are nice. Uh, Paulette Morandarte. My name is Paula. Um, I'm from New York. I... Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay, I'm studying computer animation, and then my professional vision is committed and creative. Great. Um, Peyton Lopriari. Hi, how are you doing? My name is Peyton Lopriari. I'm born and raised in Las Vegas, living in Pennsylvania. I'm studying music production, and two words to describe my professional view definitely would be methodical and motivating. Hey, nice projection. Uh, Tonique Mason. Hi, I'm Tonique Mason. I live in Virginia, um, and I'm in the audio program. Um, two words to describe my profession. Excellent. Um, Ricardo Rodriguez. Yes, sir. Um, my name is uh, Ricardo Rodriguez. I go by Rico Red. Um, I'm from Orlando, Florida. I'm studying digital cinematography. And uh, two words that describe myself would be artistic and adaptable. Excellent. Thank you. And I think the last one here is uh, Jacob Garrett. You don't have a microphone. Jacob, if you want to try to do it in the chat box, you can. If there's anybody I missed, um, there is a feature where you can raise your hand. Um, if you click on that button and, and, and I missed you, I will call on you. I can see if you've raised your hand. I don't see anybody. It looks like I got you. So, um, and uh, Amber needs a redo. Amber, why don't I give you the mic? You're open. You didn't have to do that. <laughs> okay, you know. Let's have a makeover. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I mean, I'm just, I guess, creative and fun, but. <laughs> I said that I was a funny cartoon the last time. <laughs> I'm like, Hi guys, I'm Amber James from Owensboro, Kentucky. 
we need more cartoons in the world. Oh, yes, absolutely. All right. Thanks, folks. Uh, Thank you. I, I like to, to give people a chance um, to say who they are. And uh, let me make sure I'm, I'm mute. mute everybody. Um, all right, let's move on. So what am I expecting from you guys? Well, I'm not expecting you guys to be super polished media professionals just yet. This is month one. This is a class about ideas. This is a class where we're going to read some interesting books and we're going to express our ideas. And I expect you guys to engage. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do things that are out of your comfort zone. And I want you to try it. You're, it's, it's, it's embarrassing. It's going to be a leap. Some of you, I'm going to want you to talk out loud and record your voice, and that's going to be uncomfortable. But the only way you get better at it is to start doing it and, and then do it again and critique it and learn from doing. So that's what we're going to do in this class. We're going to start making media. We're going to record our voices. We're going to tell stories. We're going to create presentations. And there's a low bar here because I'm going to give you um, software that is easy to use and you're not going to be responsible for any technical issues. You're responsible for expressing your ideas. That's what your grades are going to be based on. So if you participate, if you don't shy away, if you ask questions, if you stay involved, you're going to do well here. Uh, the, the only way that you're going to fail this class is if you drift away. And if you drift away because you don't understand something and you haven't asked the question, then I'm going to feel really bad because I'm here for you to ask me questions. So what should you expect from me? You should expect me to be available. I'm kind of like the Maytag repairman or a fireman on call. I am waiting, waiting for your call, waiting for your question. Uh, that's my job. I'm here to explain things to you, and I enjoy doing it. So don't feel like you're bothering me. Don't feel like you're, it's a stupid question or you're asking too many questions. I love to talk to students. And that's why I try to make myself as available as I can. Now, I'm not an ATM machine. I'm not going to always be available every single time you want. But you're going to be able to find that you get very, very reasonable response time from me, more than a lot of other teachers. So uh, you should expect that. You're paying my salary. I'm here for you. Now. What we're doing in this class, uh, this is what Full Sail believes in. It's called problem-based learning, which means I give you a, a sort of vaguely described task, and you have to figure it out. And the figuring it out, the actual doing, the learning by doing is the thing. It's not like there's a, uh, a hard recipe, and as long as you follow the recipe exactly, you've made a carbon copy of what I want. Uh, what we're asking you to do is to, to kind of um, use your brain to figure out what's going on, which means you should ask as many questions as you like, but you shouldn't expect us to give you a, uh, a, um, a perfect recipe of what you're doing, because we're not asking you to do something by rote. We're asking you to, to, to create something new out of your own creative mind, and that starts with a blank page, and that's a little challenging. Uh, you should also expect prompt uh, grading from me. Each week, there are new assignments, and the assignments for the next week build upon the assignments you had the previous week. And so it's important for you to know how well you did on those assignments so that you can go forward. Um, the, the way we're going to work this month uh, is we're going to create one great presentation. We're going to do a couple of other things, but this week, we're looking at a lot of different presentations by other people. We're going to get a, a notion of the range of things that can be done. Next week, I'm going to explain the project for the month, and you're going to start planning. So you're not going to make the presentation next week, but you're going to plan it out. You're going to do the pre-production work. You're going to you know, write the notes and gather images and, and, and do things like that. And in week three, you're actually going to make the presentation. You're going to start with a blank slate, and you're going to create a presentation that has a three to four minute voiceover by you as its uh, main structure. 
And then week four is about feedback. You're going to turn in that finished presentation in week three, and I'm going to have a chance to grade it and give you feedback, give you uh, uh, notions of how you can make it better. And you're going to feedback from other, other students possibly. And from that, you're going to have a chance to revise the project and make the 2.0 version that is uh, even better. So that's the process. And in, in, able to, in order to be able to do that, you have to know how you did the week before. So uh, Full Sail has a, um, a, a firm policy that any, any grades, any projects turned in on a Sunday have to be graded by the following Friday. Our department has a firm policy that any grades turned in on a Sunday have to be graded by the following Wednesday. And me, myself, I try to make it a, uh, a point of uh, pride that, that I can usually get it turned around in one day. I'm gonna try, I won't always guarantee I can do it. I've got other things that are going on and you never know, you can't, you can't promise things uh, absolutely. But for the most part, if you turn in your project Sunday night, I'm gonna get it graded during the day on Monday and get it back to you so that you'll have the entire week ahead of you to know how you did. And timely grading is something you have a right to uh, and it's something you're paying for, it's my job. So uh, that's what you should expect from me. And if you're not getting feedback soon enough, get a hold of me, ask me why. And uh, uh, you know, I will be responsible for that. Uh, professionalism. Now this is kind of an odd term, but it's something you came across when you're going through the preliminary materials this month. Uh, you know, there was that section that you went through that was mostly videos. Uh, there was a section in there called professionalism, kind of linked you to the student handbook. And if you notice, that's 10% of your grade for the month. Now, what does that mean? Well, Full Sail has this notion that in order to make you good working creative professionals, for the creative world, we not only have to teach you the skills for the creative industry that you're working in, but we have to teach you the ethos of that industry, of the work um, spirit that is embodied by everybody who works in that industry. And the way that we turn you into working professionals over the course of 30 months is to treat you like a professional, to make, have the expectations of you uh, and instill those values in you. And so uh, we do that with our GPS or global professionalism system, which is part of the grading. Professionalism is 10% of every grade, every class you have at full sale. And the way it works is that at the beginning of the month, you get 100%. And if you act like a working professional, if you are responsible and uh, uh, well-tempered through the entire month, then you know, that 100% is yours because you've earned it by your behavior. But if you miss a deadline, if you're rude to a colleague, if you, you know, uh, talk trash in a discussion board, if you promise to do something and don't do it, if you make an appointment and don't show up, if you have any act that is less professional, those things will tick off your grade. Now, in month one, this usually never comes to be. You guys are so uh, excited to be here. You're already you know, feeling your oats, and, and I think that everyone's got a good attitude. But it's my job, it's our job, to make sure that that attitude maintains. So we're monitoring the way you talk to each other. It's your guys' responsibility to treat each of your colleagues like a working professional, with respect. Uh, and it's your job to act professionally, meaning that you do what you say, you keep your word. And believe me, 30 months of acting like this in, in, in full sale, you will become the kind of working professional that people want to hire. You, once you go out looking for a job, you're going to find that uh, you're the one guy that's always showing up on time for work, sometimes even early. The one guy that volunteers for extra tasks because you know that's expected of you. Other people don't learn work habits, but you're going to learn them here at full sale. So that's what the system is all about. I don't want to dwell on it too long, but this is part of the secret sauce of full sale. We turn you not only into people who know how to run the software, but how to be working professionals, that the kind of people other people want to work with. So uh, this class is centered around two books. It's important that you're able to get access to these books. Uh, 
and we use a, um, a service called O'Reilly. It used to be called Safari Books. I need to change this. But uh, O'Reilly is a third-party library. They have over 100,000 books on the creative arts. Anything you could think of. Photography, coding, audio production, video production, 3D animation, game design. Um, they have a, a library of over 100,000 books, and you have access to all of them via your school subscription. So, uh, and, and so two, the two books that we've assigned, uh, Resonate and Slideology, are in that library, and you need to be able to access them. I'm going to jump out of the slideshow for just a second and show you, you know, what I'm expecting. Uh, here is the full sale system. We're logged into the, the week one activities. Week one, 1. 1.1 is Zoom, where you signed up for this um, uh, lecture. And incidentally, we are recording this lecture. So if, you, if there's ever a time when you're not able to make it to class, uh, and, uh, it's okay. We understand that we've arbitrarily picked the time when this class is gonna be. And I, the time I've chosen are Mondays at 6.30. So next Monday, Monday after that, 6.30, we're gonna have lecture. And then, um, crazily enough, the Monday after that, week four, is Memorial Day. So I'm not allowed to lecture on a holiday. I will have that lecture on that following Tuesday. But basically, Mondays at 6.30 is when these lectures happen. If you can't uh, attend, then I record the entire session and we put it back into the um, page. If you'll notice, there's a, a heading down here that says recordings. There's nothing here now, but uh, it takes me about an hour to process the video after we finished lecture. So uh, the lecture finishes at eight o'clock or so. Somewhere around nine o'clock, there'll be a video there that you can watch through the rest of the week. So that's helpful even if you attend live uh, because you don't have to take notes. Uh, those of you that are taking notes and furiously not you know, catching everything and feeling frustrated, don't worry about that. We don't really want you to take notes. Uh, if there's something you need to review, you can always come back. And even if you attended live, you can watch the video. And if you weren't able to be attending live, then you could watch the video. So everyone has a responsibility to uh, at least watch the video. Uh, and if you, can, you know, uh, if you attend live, you don't have to watch the video, but if you attend live, the, the videos will be available here for you. Uh, that was just a little aside, but here at 1.2 is where we have the reading assignments. And so we have links to all the chapters. We we're, this week we're wanting you to read five chapters from the book Resonate. And so when I click on this link, it should take me through to the O'Reilly website and show me the head of this book. And so what has happened is that my school credentials, I was logged into FSO and I was logged in with my school email and password and those credentials passed through when I linked to this other site and uh, Uh, and accepted those credentials and everything's fine. So that should work for everybody. If you come here and you click on these links and you don't not get into the O'Reilly site, contact me or tech support, because we need to fix that. We need to make sure that your credentials log you into the website. Now there's uh, one other thing that we need to mention, which is that this is the O'Reilly website. You have to be logged into the website to read the books. So if I, if I start in here, um, let me come back and just uh, find a chapter. Start reading the chapter. Uh, I, can, I can just be reading this like this. Uh, but I'm connected online. So those of you that are home connected with a broadband connection, no problem at all. Those of you that are on your phone and you're using data, well, it's not a great idea to have to be reading a book to be connected to a, a, a website. Uh, and, and that is unfortunate. So we need to find some workarounds. And, that, and also, these books are formatted for um, computers, wide screens. They look good. These are art books, and they've got good uh, artwork in them. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy reading them. But if you're tasked with reading them on a phone, you're going to find that it's a little bit difficult. And I apologize for that. Uh, O'Reilly has a web app, has a, uh, an online app. 
However, not every book that they have in their library is available in the online app. And unfortunately, the two books we use in our class are not available. So I'm asking you not really to download the O'Reilly app. Later on, previous classes after this, it may work fine. And the O'Reilly app will allow you to download the book and read on your phone offline, which is a terrific thing that you can do. But you're not able to do that with our books. So you, if you're on a phone, you're gonna to have to use the browser in your phone to connect to the O'Reilly website and read the material that way. However, there is one grace that I can give you. If you go to the front page of the O'Reilly site and go down to the bottom links, uh, you can see that there used to be a link for the mobile version of the site. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to post that link in announcements. I post announcements uh, throughout the week. Uh, and I'm going to give you a link. There is a mobile version of this website so that you can read a mobile version of this. It will be absent the artwork, but it will be formatted in such a way that it's not such wide columns. And so those of you that are on a phone and are having trouble reading the reading, I want to make sure that you have access to it and we will work that out. So I'll make sure that the link to the mobile versions of these books are available to you and uh, we'll uh, uh, make sure that anybody that's having trouble reading it gets access to the books. It's not really your fault. We're kind of mad at O'Reilly uh, because they didn't license the two books that we needed for their, uh, their, their mobile app. And I'm realizing that more and more people are using their phones rather than computers to do these classes. So it becomes important to us. If it's important to you, it's important to us and we'll make sure that you have access to this but for now, realize that you've got to use the mobile or you've got to use the website to access these books. And that's what's linked to in these, book, uh, in these links on the FSO. So uh, do your best to get the reading done. And if you're struggling, if you're having trouble, let me know and I will work with you to find workarounds for that. So um, back to these books, why have we signed these books? Well, they're written by a graphic designer named Nancy Duarte. And she specifically wrote them for a reason that she was unhappy with the way people used PowerPoints in meetings. She was a graphic designer and as graphic designers do, they go to pitch meetings a lot and they, they're meeting with other people who are creative professionals. So she would be in these regular business meetings and. If you ever go to a regular business meeting, they get run on PowerPoint. Somehow, this became the language that everyone uses. And so she would be in this meeting. And now if you're in an, a business meeting with pharmacists or insurance salesmen or lawyers, you can kind of expect boring PowerPoint. You know, it's like, what does a lawyer know? But she was in a room with other graphic designers and she, she knew that these people knew better, that they could make better slides, that they could make more entertaining presentations. She couldn't figure out why people were just doing PowerPoint the wrong way. And there are lots of wrong ways that people do PowerPoint. And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, and that's what we're going to get fixed with you guys. Uh, one thing that people do is as they talk through their presentation, everything they have to say is put on those slides. So the slides are almost like subtitles or something like that. And so rather than give people art to look at or visuals, they're just staring at the words that you're about to say. That's pretty brain dead. Um, and then if they don't do that, then what they do is have lots of bullet points that are hard to read, very complicated slides, or they use the clip art that comes with PowerPoint, which is a bunch of cartoon art, which is fine for third graders, but it doesn't work for creative professionals. So Nancy Duarte being a, uh, an art director decided to write the book Slideology. And it's a book about how to design slides that have a good meaning for people, that are useful for presentations. And she developed a technique. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how to make slides that, that have, are, have the most effect. But what you have to realize is that the slides are not the presentation. The, supplies, the slides are supporting 
what you have to say. And this is where people get PowerPoint all wrong. They don't ever figure out what is the story I'm telling before they go to PowerPoint. People screw up PowerPoint because they open it first. They think that it's a program to make the presentation. It's not, it's a program to finish the presentation. It's a program to illustrate the presentation. What happens when you open up PowerPoint? You click on it, it opens up on a subpage that's a templates and you pick some style and you have a background image and you have particular fonts and colors and layouts so that your slides are consistent. And that's what PowerPoint does really good. All the slides are consistent throughout because you picked a template. But as soon as you pick the template, it lands on slide one and you're just staring at this blank page with a blinking cursor that says, feed me. Now, if you've opened PowerPoint just because someone told you to make a presentation and you haven't thought about what that presentation is gonna be yet, then this is a terrible time to be opening PowerPoint. PowerPoint's screaming, feed me. And you haven't even thought about what you're gonna do. So most people make awful presentations because they open PowerPoint too early. PowerPoint should only be opened up at the end of the process after you know what you're going to say. It's there to help illustrate your story. It's not there to create the story. It's not a writing program. It is a slide presentation creation program. And the slides that you make should adhere themselves to your words. So very rarely do people make pro presentations so visual that the slides tell the entire story. For the most of us, we're telling the stories ourselves. That's what our vocal presentations are for. We stand in front of people, we tell them the story, uh, and, and believe me, it is a story. I'm gonna get into that in a second. But what we have to say is important. And what the slides do are they help people to understand our words. They're support. And you don't do support first, you do support afterwards. And that's why people get PowerPoint wrong. You're gonna hear me talking about PowerPoint all month. And we're gonna, we're gonna kick it like a dog and we're gonna pet it like a dog. Software, PowerPoint is great software, but if it's used incorrectly, then it's a problem. So we need to, break you guys of that habit. Use PowerPoint correctly. And uh, so you don't have to use PowerPoint at all this month. We're gonna give you a lot of creative freedom. We're gonna give you a lot of alternate choices. So if you're not a PowerPoint person, you don't even worry about it. If you're someone who's been using PowerPoint a lot through high school and you feel like you know the program, fine. But make sure we're gonna break you all your bad habits. I don't want a lot of complicated slides or, uh, a few complicated slides. You know, another bad thing that people do with PowerPoint is they, they have one or two slides that have 50 images on them. That's the wrong thing to do. Have 50 slides that have a single image on them. Then you've got some visual pace. Then you're, you're running through a, a multimedia show. So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about the bad things that people do with PowerPoint, but we wanna talk about the right way to do this and get you guys started on it. Um, so anyway, Slideology was a huge hit and, uh, you know, sold well. And, and, and as she went on book tour, people were coming up with all kinds of questions to her and she realized she'd only told half the story because Slideology is how to make good slides, but people were still missing that front part of the story. How do I make a good presentation? So that's when she wrote Resonate, although it's the second book she wrote. It's the first book we're gonna read because it talks about asking the fundamental questions, doing the prep, doing the pre-production work that you need to do in order to make a great presentation. Figuring out who you're talking to, why you're saying, how to get the story across. All of these things that are things that you have to figure out before you ever open up PowerPoint. So in these first chapters that we're assigning, one to four and seven, you're gonna learn her basic principles about what she thinks is a, a good presentation, how to make a presentation that really works. And she thinks presentations are important. They're, they're the way we communicate with each other right now. And some of the principles of a good presentation are things that, uh, you know, 
again, you want to take to heart so that you're not making bad choices. One of the reasons presentations are good is because uh, one factor of them is the, the briefer, the better. They're meant to be short. You do not pad a presentation to show off. Your presentation needs to get the heart of what you have to say, needs to get there quickly and clearly, and then get out. Presentations are not meant to run long. They are not, you know, political speeches that just, you know, get stuffed full of air. They are sushi knives meant to cut to the precise point. A, a short presentation that clarifies the mind and then gets out of the way allows you to have a business discussion thereafter. So a good presentation is setting us up for the discussion that needs to happen, the action that needs to take place. And it shouldn't have a lot of extraneous stuff in it. It should be short and concise. So we're gonna learn a lot of these principles and you're gonna learn them from reading these first four chapters. And that's gonna make you um, someone who understands what works and doesn't work in a presentation. So presentations happen in business meetings and creative business meetings a lot right now because people need to affect change quickly. You know, in the old days, if you had a problem, some vice president might form a commission and they'd study it for six months and then they write a white paper and it might get filed somewhere. The world works too fast nowadays for that kind of thing to go on. So nowadays, if there's a problem, you book a, um, book a conference room for three days from now, give someone the assignment to uh, host the meeting. The person who hosts the meeting has to create a presentation that at the beginning of that meeting sets things up so that you can make a decision. So you've got all the right people in the room in an hour. Your presentation shouldn't be more than five to 10 minutes long. And then you've got the rest of that hour to talk about the issues that you've set up. And if you've done your job right, if your presentation clarifies the issues, then everybody's gonna have a good discussion because we are not going to get off track. We're gonna be focused on exactly the one issue we wanna solve in this meeting and then get the hell out. It's about change. It's about making things happen fast. This is the way the industry works. And therefore you need to be able to speak in this fashion. You need to be able to run short meetings, uh, to do a PowerPoint introduction to your discussions yourselves. Whether it's the audio industry or the video game industry or, or the movie industry, these are the way people solve problems. And I need you to guys to be able to speak that language, be able to feel confident talking things through and addressing people. So industry and art thrive on change. Presentations are about getting people to uh, look at a particular point of view. So why are so many presentations boring? You, you, we've all seen them. I mean, people make boring presentations because they're not sure what they have to do. You know, if they're supposed to make a presentation on a subject, then they just list a whole bunch of facts. It's like reading the phone book. No one wants to hear you read the phone book. So the most important thing you can do if you have a topic that you need to give a presentation on is to figure out how to talk about that topic. Don't just gather a bunch of facts together and string them along. Figure out what the point is. Tell a story. We've discovered, humans have, that facts alone don't make engaging presentations. That a story, a good story, is the basis of all powerful presentations. No matter what it is you have to make a presentation on, it could be on, you know, whether or not we should buy more toilet paper. It can't be all facts. It can't be miscellaneous information. It has to be a story. What does it take to tell a story? A beginning, middle, and end. You need to be able to string facts together so that they make sense, that they flow from one point to another. Why is storytelling more effective than simply reporting? Well, it impacts more of the brain. This goes back to humans 100,000 years ago. Our literal survival as a species is dependent on. People used to gather around a campfire and they learn vital information. You know, the elder of the, of the tribe 
would tell you what dangers were out there. You needed to learn them. You needed to learn what you had to do about them. So it couldn't be a boring meeting. It couldn't be one where you're not paying attention or you're nodding off. You needed to know this shit. I'm sorry, uh, I shouldn't say that. Um, so people would gather around the campfire and the storyteller would tell an exciting story with media and drama and people would remember it. You have to be able to tell your story, not in a boring way, but in an exciting way. And that's the point of media. That's the point of adding images. That's the point of adding video. That's the point of adding audio. That you're telling this in a media rich way that's gonna give this drama and your brain is gonna remember it. That's what multimedia presentations are all about. You're making something so that people can actually remember it, that it's gonna to go to their head. We've done studies and if you just tell people facts you know, even if they're important facts they have to remember. Facts alone get stored in one or two places in the brain. And if you try to recall them, it's hard because they don't really connect. But when you tell someone a story and there's multimedia involved and there's sensory information, then that story is getting stored in multiple places. And when they have to recall it, they're able to recall it because those extra uh, impacts that you've made when you're telling them. So like I say, the elements of story are beginning, middle, and end. Whatever it is you have to say, you have to figure out how to set it up. A beginning is an opening layout. What's going on? This is the issue. What do we have to do? Uh, you know, and even if you're doing a boring meeting about do we need to buy toilet paper, there is a way to tell it in a story. You can, you can make a joke about how we're running out of toilet paper. You can get people to know that there's an urgency. And then the middle is what the complications are. So the middle is where there starts to be a discussion choice. There starts to be an impact, which means um, if you're having a meeting about toilet paper, let's say we could buy in bulk when we get all the paper we need, but it's going to take six weeks. So we're going to have to make what we have last for six weeks. Or we can make an emergency purchase right now and we can get more toilet paper. But then we're going to have to make another emergency purchase in another three or four weeks. So there you have the middle, the complications, the, the journey that has to be traveled from the beginning to the end. And at the end, we have something called the takeaway, where you as the leader, as the storyteller, give people uh, the choice or land about where we need to be. Either you want to make this decision for everyone, so you're going to load uh, the answers, or you're going to want this to be an open discussion, and so you make sure everybody is aware of the issues. You know that it's going to be cheaper if we wait. Uh, you know we're just going to have to, you know, um, uh, uh, keep control on, on uh, tell everybody to use less toilet paper for the next two or three weeks. But then we'll be set for the next six weeks and we won't six months and we won't have to worry about it. Or else you just say, this isn't anything we want to bother about. Let's just somebody send somebody down the road to do it and blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I know that you probably wouldn't waste an entire meeting on buying toilet paper, but I'm just trying to give you an example of whatever it is that you have to talk about, whether it's mundane or it's sublime, there are issues in, that allow you to put it into a story and make it make sense. And if you communicate that way, then people are going to be engaged. People are going to be interested in. So you need to learn to tell a story. And that's what we're going to talk about this month. We're going to teach, we're going to, we're going to have each of you become storytellers. Now, I know you're already storytellers, but we're going to learn how to take things that you wouldn't consider stories, turn them into stories. Now, we also talked about what Nancy Duarte is putting forth as the notion of a, the right kind of slide. Uh, you were going to read several chapters from Slideology. We're going to get a lot of interesting information. But at its heart, Nancy Duarte has defined a combination of text and picture together in a single slide as the best way of supporting what people have to say. So when I say, quote, this could just be, you know, uh, piece of information, it doesn't have to be a quote, but text and image together. Uh, and and the, 
the purpose of adding the image is to make sure that people interpret the text the way that you want them to. So as an example, here's a quote. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. It's by Socrates. So I've given you this as raw as possible. It's black text on a white background. There is nothing to color what you have to say other than knowing it's from Socrates. So if you know who Socrates is, you know that the quote's about 3,000 years old. But how do you interpret this? Is this about education through the ages? Is this about you know what education is like on a personal level? You know you can add your own bias to this and make your own interpretation. But if I'm giving you this quote in a presentation and I want you to interpret the way I want you to interpret it, then my job is to couple this with an image that will make you think about it in a particular way. For instance, if I want you to think about the urgency of education today, make this very modern and cutting, well, I might combine it with an image of third world kids teaching themselves under an underpass. So now you really have a sense of, of, of the social current, of the world as it is today, of education as something that is current and vital. And so the image colors the way that you see that quote. Maybe that's not what I wanted. Maybe I did want you to think about education through the ages and the loftiness of Socrates. So maybe I might take a Renaissance painting of Socrates and combine it with that quote. And now, as you read this quote, you are thinking about education through the ages. This notion of seeing some ancient um, image, Renaissance painting, it's gonna make you feel like uh, you're talking about timelessness. And that notion of education is gonna be uh, even greater. Now, more common is figuring out how to engage your particular audience. You have to know who you're talking to. So how can I get people interested in this quote or in Socrates? I'm sure this group is not somebody who cares much about Socrates. So what kind of impact might you have had? What kind of uh, um, connection might you have had to Socrates? Well, you guys are media folk. Uh, I don't think you'd ever come up in a video game, but if I'm thinking about movies, there's a character in a Bill and Ed excellent adventure movie called Socrates. So I could take a movie clip from that and maybe we've got a connection because you're movie fans and you like Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Well, there's an issue with that. This is a movie from the 90s. I'm an old fart. This sounds like yesterday to me, but you guys are young whippersnappers. Do you know this movie? Well, it's got Keanu Reeves in it. Keanu Reeves is still around. He's a John Wick and Netflix is around and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is a, a great movie. And with Netflix, you can always see it. So I think it's worthwhile making that in joke. And when I do, I make a connection to my audience. I'm saying, I have this cultural reference, you have this cultural reference, we're bonding. So you can use the art as a way of connecting the audience to yourself, as well as to the quote. So there's, these are different ways that you use images to see the audience understanding the text the same way you do. So what you're doing is you're leading the audience along. You're taking them on a storytelling journey. Now, I, I know you guys have probably all heard uh, Joseph Campbell's storytelling theory. So the hero goes on a journey. In storytelling, the hero goes out into the world and he goes through a bunch of changes and he arrives you know, at his destiny. What is that? That's the beginning of the middle and end. The hero, he's at his house, he's stuck at the Shire. Things move him forward. You know, a wizard comes along and says, hey, you have to go find a ring and take it to some fire and, and dump it. And he leaves his house and he goes on an adventure. And in the middle, he encounters all these different adventures. In the end, he gets the damn ring in the fire, uh, mortar dies and, uh, and, and, and the hero can go home. 
So it's the journey of the hero. In each story that you tell, people are going to listen to it and they're going to imagine that they're the hero going through it. So one thing to remember is that as you're telling these stories, you are not the hero. You're the storyteller. You think that you're the hero. You might even be telling a story about yourself, but you're not the hero. What you're doing is you're telling a story so that the audience can kind of run a movie in the back of their mind, imagining it's them. So as a storyteller, you've got to use action words. You've got to be descriptive so that people can, can see this movie in their head as you're talking. And there's a particular term for you. You're not the hero, but in storytelling theory, the person who takes the hero on his journey, the person who initiates them, the Gandalf who takes uh, Frodo or Bilbo out of the Shire is the mentor. So your relationship to the audience is that you are their mentor. You have to take them on this journey and get them started. Now you don't get to finish the journey with them. You get them initiated. You take them in, get them engaged in the material, and then talk them through. And that's the job of the mentor is to initiate your audience, your, your hero on his journey. And as you're talking to your audience, they're all the heroes and you're trying to get them to take this journey in their head. If they do that, if they're engaged, that solid storytelling, they're definitely going to listen to and remember what you have to say. They're going to be engaged in the presentation that you're making them. And that's your job. And that will be some uh, great uh, accomplishment. If you, can, if you can get your audience to go on this journey with you, then you have done your job as a presenter. And it feels really good. You can tell when the audience has been engaged. Um, now, it's going to be harder for us. We are not going to be doing these things live. Now, for most of you, that's, that's a, a, a pleasure. If you were coming here to Full Sail live in class, you would be making your presentation to the entire class, standing in front of them, doing that presentation. As an online group, you're recording your voiceover. And so it's gonna be necessary for everyone to record a three to four minute voiceover and attach slides to it. And that's the presentation that you'll make. So you are saving yourself the, the stage fright or embarrassment of uh, live performance, but everyone is gonna to have to perform using their voice to connect to the audience. You're gonna to have to tell your story. And that's what it's all about. That's gonna be doing this month. So if anybody feels uncomfortable about that, the discussion uh, activity this week is we want you to tell us what your history is with presentation. We want you to tell us uh, how uh, or what you've done uh, previously in terms of experience. So the discussion board, we're asking for two things, an initial post. So uh, you can, you can, this first box here takes initial posts, and if you type in it, it will push it forward. But you probably all want to go ahead on to the discussion board. So below the completion board, go to discussion. You should go ahead and go there first. And you can see this is the discussion board. I've written a post. We have a couple of people who've written posts already. And if you want to make your own post with your name attached to it, you'll go to the discussion at the top. You also have the ability, you have the responsibility of responding to two or more other people's posts. So if you wanted to respond to my post, you would hit the reply button down here below my name, my, my thing, and it would open up a, a new box for you to type. And then you could type in there and uh, um, uh, that, that's how you would do that. Uh, let's see if I can get out of this. Um, so we want everybody to try to um, get their presentation, their, their initial post done by the end of the day, Wednesday. Um, we, we want everyone else to be able to comment on what you've written. So we need you to post them, get the initial posts up so that you can come back later and read what other people have written and respond to them. And we, we hope you respond to more than two people. Two people is a minimum. If you if you do less than two, it's going to affect your grade. Um, if you do more than two, 
it'll affect your grade in a positive way. So uh, respond to as many people as you want. And don't just respond, hey, great post. We want you to really engage with people. And in terms of what you write on your initial posts, we've got the instructions here. If you, if you uh, look at the downloads, for each assignment, there's always a download that explains what the assignment is. So if you download this PDF, you'll be able to have these instructions. And the instructions have a series of prompts in them. There's a series of things that you can talk about. Do you have to talk about them all? No, they're just suggestions. So you could talk about anything you want in your discussion post, but what we're really looking for is for you to tell us sort of what your experience is, what your level of, of comfort is, um, what, you're what you're here to learn more about. You wanna learn more about slide design, or you like, like to learn more about uh, using your voice to talk to people about overcoming stage fright or whatever, uh, about what are good presentation programs. Uh, I know a lot of you are in other audio program or other degree programs like uh, audio production and, and film production. You know, th those all have their own tools. You can use uh, Logic to record your voice and you can use Final Cut Pro to put together slideshows and so forth. So we're gonna show you uh, a lot of different tools and we're gonna give you options on what you wanna use. There's, there's no uh, set rules. And uh, again, we know that a lot of you are gonna work on your phone and there are limitations to what some of the software can do on phones. So we're gonna make sure that you know what's possible on the gear that you have. Uh, so read the instructions and then just come back and make an initial post. Try to get it in by Wednesday. If you don't get it in by Wednesday night, it's not gonna be terrible, but try to get it in as soon as you can. Get that out of the way. So in terms of making a plan, for how to work from today on. I would say get started with the reading today or tomorrow. Have, try to have the reading done by Thursday. Uh, try to get your initial post done by Wednesday night. Once you've done the initial post, we're gonna go on to the main assignment. And the main assignment is 1.4 professional presentation analysis. And here, we're gonna to go to the website TED.com. Now, if you've never heard of TED, TED stands for Technology, Education, and Design. TED is a group that's been putting on uh, exhibitions around the world for 10 or 15 years. And instead of having one main speaker who speaks like 90 minutes long, they have 30 or 40 speakers over a two or three day period. And each one of them speaks for 20 minutes or less. So basically, they're making short, creative presentations. They're following the rules that Nancy Duarte has set forward. And uh, every time the TED uh, Talk group has a conference somewhere in the world, they film every single presentation and they make them available here. So over the years, they built up, and now there are over 3,400 different talks on the most diverse collection of material you can imagine. Uh, and, and I really want you to dive deep into this. This is a great place to just get lost for a day. Um, so if you've never seen TED Talks, just treat them like popcorn and eat as many as you want. Uh, the instructions for what we want you to do, if you come here and down, download the instructions here, you will see that we want you to research and watch a minimum of three TED Talks and then answer some questions. You're gonna write a review of them. So this is a written assignment. This is not a presentation. I prefer you not use PowerPoint for this. You can if you want, I'm not gonna deny it that, that, but this is an assignment that you should use Word on because this is a written assignment. I want you to pick three TED Talks. Now I'm picking three, I hope you watch 20. You know, it, it can only make you smarter. If you take eight hours and go down the rabbit hole and just watch PowerPoint after, or uh, TED Talk after TED Talk, you won't believe how many things you'll learn. It's a really, really uh, exciting and diverse group of people, really good ideas, and most of them are good presenters. Not all of them. And so what we want you to do 
is to pick three talks and review the presenters. So you may like them or dislike them. It, it might be more interesting for you to find a presenter who isn't very good and tell me why he's screwing, he or she is screwing up. But we want you to review the presenter and tell us how well he or she did. Now, some of the TED Talks don't have presenters. They're animated. If that's an animated one, please don't pick it because you have to be able to watch the presenter and be able to, to talk about how well they did. So for each, uh, each TED Talk, I want you to write two or three paragraphs telling me what they did right, how they used body language, how they addressed the audience, you know, what were their techniques, and so forth. Now the language, the criteria you're gonna to use to judge whether or not they did a good job, you're gonna get from the reading in Resonate. So I would recommend before you start working on the TED Talk assignment that you get all of the reading done for this week. Uh, so the reading is, will give you a, uh, a vocabulary for talking about how well everyone did their job. And then I want you to pick three TED Talks that you like and write uh, presentations about them. Now, I have over the years accumulated some really great examples from students who've done this work before. And I'm happy to share that stuff with you. So um, I have a, an enormous number of uh, student papers that show you what we're looking for here. So when you write three presentations, for each presentation, I want you to tell me who the presenter is. You have to identify the person. It's good to have the name of the presentation. Now you're not reviewing the presentation. You're not reviewing the content of the presentation. You're reviewing the presenter. You're telling me how well the presenter did his or her job. But two or three paragraphs is all I ask. Sometimes students will go nuts and write a whole lot more. And you'll notice that they also have images in them. In the instructions, you're gonna notice that we're asking you research and watch a minimum of three different TED Talks, answer these questions. So there's a series of questions here. Now, I don't want you to give me a and A. I want you just to use these as ideas and props. I want you to write a two paragraph review of each performer, telling me what he did what, right or wrong or what you liked or what you didn't like. So that's that. Create a document for this assignment and include visual imagery. So that's another thing I wanted to mention. Uh, not only should you write a great review, but then you should find some pictures to illustrate it. How many pictures? There are no rules. Uh, there are three different TED Talks, so maybe you want to have at least three. You don't have to have at least three. Uh, a single image, if it's great, it might be enough. Uh, and some people, you know, they go nuts, like uh, the one I was just showing you before. Uh, and they have lots and lots of images. That's okay. You can't impress me by having too many images. The, the thing about the images is they have to help me understand what you're writing. I'm going to judge the images you picked on whether or not they help me understand what you've written. So if you're writing about a particular uh, author, you know, here's J.J. Abrams, and I see a picture of J.J. Abrams, that's helpful, you know. Uh, he talks about the mystery box, and that's not actually the mystery box, it's just a prop. But again, these are images that help me understand the story that's being written about. And they're analogous to the way slides support a vocal presentation in a slideshow. And I want you to think about that because this is the skill that we're trying to impart. So use as many or as few images as you like in your presentation, but know that you're being judged on whether or not the images are relevant, whether they're helpful to me to understand what you're saying. And that's a skill that you need to work on and get, and get good at. And you could turn it in as a Word doc or PDF. So I have several examples here. And instead of giving everybody the same couple of examples, um, I want to give everybody different examples. 
And the reason for that is that even though there are 3,400 TED Talks here, there's no particular ones I want to lock off from everyone using. And I'm happy to share samples from previous students with, with anybody, but the rule is going to be, if I share a sample with you, you can't use those particular TED Talk choices. So if I were to give you um, this one, then you couldn't use John Green. Uh, not a big sacrifice, but uh, instead of making everyone make the same sacrifice, I'm just going to give everyone different uh, samples. And you have, to call, you have to request your sample from me. I'm not going to force them on everybody. But just uh, send me a, um, a text, send me a message on FSO asking for uh, uh, samples, and I'm happy to supply you with samples. And uh, as I uh, get more great examples from you guys, I'm going to use some of yours for next month. Uh, to show off to people. But uh, what I want are for you to pick three TED Talks that you like, and you don't need to pick more than three, and you know we always want you to go over and above. Uh, three TED Talks is fine, um, but give me two or three paragraphs on how well each one of them did their job. And then the final third aspect of this project, conclude your assignment, with a list of 10 qualities, techniques, and or presentation skills that made the presentations you watched inspiring, creative, and effective. Now this is gonna come purely out of the Nancy Duarte reading. So if you didn't do the reading, you're gonna have trouble with this. As long as you did the reading, you know, you're gonna know exactly what uh, qualities to talk about. But what I want you to do is don't just list the qualities, uh, you know, tell me uh, who engaged them and where they were used, et cetera. So as we look at uh, everyone's samples here, you're, giving, you're getting two or three paragraph reviews of how well the presenter did his or her job. They're amply illustrated. They tell me the name of the presenter and the name of the talk. And at the end, I have 10 qualities that they all share. So you're comparing the TED Talks to each other at the end. Um, and. Uh, you're giving me 10 qualities and you're, you're pointing out, you know, where do they use humor? Where do they use props, et cetera? Uh, and that's what I'm looking for. And once you've created this document, you come back to 1.4 and there's an upload page here, upload uh, box here. If you drop a file on this, it will upload to the system. So if you drink, make a word doc or a PDF, PDFs are really good as well. Uh, that, will be you submitting your homework. Now, we mentioned here that uh, in terms of getting your homework done, this, everyone here who's now a student is getting a free copy of Microsoft Office 365. The school wants you to have this so that it, you, you run Outlook out from it. Your, your school email should be running on Outlook. But Microsoft does this great thing for all students. If you're a legitimate student with a .edu email address, they will give you a free four-year license to Office 365. This is the same professional product that everyone pays for. And it comes with online storage of a terabyte, comes with online versions of the apps, and you get to download versions for uh, your own operating or your own your own device so there's a windows version a mac version an android version and an ios version so if you have a, a, an ipad you can get the ios version and you can put it on there um, be aware that the android and ios versions of powerpoint don't have all of the features of the mac and the windows powerpoints specifically they're missing audio which is very important to us uh, doesn't mean you can't do audio, but we're going to have to do some workarounds. But if you are on an iPad, please go ahead and download the software. And another really cool thing that Microsoft does is they allow you to have two installs per license. So you can put it on whatever you have right now. You can put it on your PC or your phone. And when you get your launch box in uh, three or four months, you can put it on your launch box there as well. So you can have it in both places. So um, if you're on a phone and you're working on Office 365 online, 
you may not have files stored on your phone. So when I said that if you finish your homework and you take that file, if you're on a Mac or a PC, you're gonna have a uh, you know file.docx, an actual thing that you can pick up and, and move around. And that can be uploaded from your Windows or Mac desktop to the website. Doesn't work that way with phones. If you're online and you're connected uh, to Office 365, you're gonna mount, you're gonna, your, your work is gonna get stored on the cloud, on the internet. So instead of being on your phone, the finished version of the file that you create in Office 365 exists on the internet. And so instead of dragging and dropping that file, you will link to it. You will share that document. And in sharing that document, you get a URL, like you're just going from web page to web page. And when you share a document, you just upload it as, as a text file. So you can put it on a text file and upload it, or you can put it in the feedback message and send it to me. But what you're not doing is you're not uploading a file from uh, Office 365 to here, you're uploading a link, you're sharing a link so that I'll actually be viewing your homework on uh, Office 365, the website. Hope that's clear. So uh, that's actually, about all I've got. Uh, those are the two assignments. They're due on Sunday night at midnight. And uh, you have all week to begin to work on them. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be around all week. Um, if you have any questions right now, I'm happy to answer questions. So you can ask questions in the chat box or you can raise your hand uh, and uh, uh, give you a microphone. I'll unmute your mic. Anybody have any questions for me? I see someone mentioned Discord in the uh, uh, chat box. We do have a Discord channel. That's just another way to get a hold of people and a way that I can leave up information and pass information back and forth and so forth. Uh, I found that very helpful and it's much more casual. Um, and I'll put a note up with the link to Discord. It was in the opening message uh, that everyone received Sunday night, but uh, I will make sure that uh, uh, the link to get to there is uh, still available to everyone. But does anybody have any question about the homework or anything else tonight? If not, I'm gonna let you guys go. I know I've been uh, talking for quite a while, but uh, I think we got a lot accomplished. Uh, is everybody good? All right. Good night, guys. Nice to meet you all. And welcome to Full Sail once again. Happy you guys are here. Eric has a question. Oh, okay. Who has a question? I do, Lyric. All right. You're unmuted. Okay. So you said that we have to do our voiceovers for the presentations. Um, is there going to be like a tutorial on how to do that or? Oh, sure, what? sure. I was talking about stuff that in weeks beyond this week. Oh, no, that was just my um, only question about the presentation. That, that was just my thing. Uh, now I don't understand. Um, I don't have questions about the homework, but when you said, I was thinking about like far ahead when we have to do our presentations. And you say we have to do our voice voiceover. That's what yes. I was talking about. We'll start talking about that next week, and then we'll talk about it more in week three. Okay, that's it. All right, terrific. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody else? All right, night, guys.